welcome to our latest video. This video is going to briefly discuss how to take the GNOME fallback session that we used in previous videos to make Ubuntu 11.10 look even more like its classic counterparts. If you remember back to our original video we did on this, the GNOME panel did not look the same, at least not like we had expected it to. And there were some other issues with it. Now, we've stumbled upon some other edits and some tweaks and things that will make it look pretty much identical to the way that it used to in classic Ubuntu. Let's go ahead and log in. By default we only have two flavors of Ubuntu. We have Ubuntu and Ubuntu 2D, both of which feature Unity. The 2D version does use a lower resource uh, version of Unity. So now that we're in our desktop, there's the Unity toolbar down the left hand side. And our aim is to get rid of the Unity toolbar and restore the top panel to look the way it always has in previous Ubuntu versions. So let's go ahead and jump into that and we will see what we need to do to get started. First off, we need to install the GNOME fallback session. To do this, we need to launch Terminal from the dash. So simply come up and click on the dash, type in Terminal, then click the Terminal shortcut. We'll zoom in so we can get a better look. Next, we need to type in a simple command. Now we need to type in sudo space apt dash get space install space gnome dash session dash fallback and hit the enter key. Once you hit the enter key it will ask you to punch in your password. This is the same password you use to log into your system and also get super user rights. So we'll simply hit enter, punch in our password and hit enter again. Now it's going to go out, check the resources, make sure that the packages are available. Just simply say yes and hit enter again and it will download the packages. This will take just a moment, especially depending on your network speed. So I will go ahead and jump forward uh, to the point where which we can interact again. Okay, once the necessary packages have been downloaded, they will go ahead and go through the installation process, which will take a minute or two. Uh, so we'll go ahead and we'll jump through this and we will be right back. Now that that's installed, simply type exit in the terminal and press the enter key to close out the terminal screen. Now that the fallback session has been installed, we need to log off of Ubuntu and log back in using classic Ubuntu no effects. You can either just do a restart or you can just simply log off the machine. In this situation, I chose to do a restart. So up to this point, we're essentially in the same place that our previous video on the GNOME Classic theme got to but we're not finished yet. Now we need to go in and make a couple tweaks, make a couple changes, uh, and make sure that that panel will look like it used to. So simply select the GNOME Classic No Effects from the startup options, punch in your password, and hit enter to log in. Once the desktop comes up, you will notice that we now have a different looking desktop and the Unity bar is now gone on the left hand side. Now we didn't completely get rid of Unity, uh, we can still boot back into stock Ubuntu 11.10 at any time, uh, but you will notice that the classic Ubuntu no effects has kind of a messed up looking GNOME classic panel. Now uh, you got your virtual workspaces down the bottom right. The upper panel you notice has some missing spacers, doesn't look the greatest, and there's some just some issues with it. Uh, so let's just simply go in and do some edits and some tweaks and make it look the way it's supposed to. First things first, we need to come up to the top panel, press the Alt key on your keyboard and right click your mouse. In the pop-up menu, mouse down to Properties and that will bring up the panel properties. Click on the Background tab and we need to go down and put a radio click in the background image. Now we're going to browse for a particular image file to fill the panel background with and the image file that we're looking for currently lives in the user folder so you need to go to user forward slash share forward slash themes forward slash ambience forward slash gtk 2.0 forward slash apps forward slash image img forward slash panel dot png that is the image file that we want to use as the background for our upper panel bar 
Once you find it, simply click on open and click on close. You'll notice the other options stay grayed out. That's what we want to do. And if you look at the top panel, you can see it is in fact filled in now. But we're still not done. There's still a little more tweaking we need to do. Next thing we need to do is install the indicator applet. So we need to launch terminals. So go to applications, accessories, and down to terminal. Once terminal is launched, we need to type the following command. Type sudo space add dash apt dash repository space ppa colon jconti forward slash gnome3. That's g-n-o-m-e-3. Then hit the enter key. Next, you'll be prompted for your password. This is the same password that you use to log on to the system. So go ahead and type that in and press the enter key as well. Go ahead and press the enter key to accept that you're going to add that PPA to your system's uh, software repositories or your sources. Once that's done, we need to go ahead and install it. Now you may want to go ahead and do an update on your apt, but in this case I'll just go ahead and install it. So type sudo space apt dash get space install space indicator dash applet dash complete. Now here we will let Ubuntu do its job. It'll simply go out and find the indicator applet complete package and it'll go ahead and install that. And here in a second it will prompt us to verify that we want to use that particular package and exactly how much space it'll take up after it's installed. So we just want to say Y for yes, hit enter, and it'll go out and do its job. It'll pull down the package and it will install it. This may take a second or two, so we'll just hang tight until it's finished. It'll only take another moment or so. Once it's done, we can simply close the terminal and then we'll get into adding the panel to the upper panel bar. So here we see that we have our prompt again. We need to just simply type exit and press enter. That will exit the terminal screen. Now we need to get rid of some of these indicators that are already on the top panel. That will make it a little easier to slide our new indicator in place. The date and time indicator will be our first victim. So just simply mouse over that indicator, press the alt key on your keyboard and right click and choose remove from panel and confirm it and do the same thing for the remaining three indicators. Uh, for the volume, now the volume one was kind of tricky. Um, we'll simply just go ahead and do the same thing for it and for the user menu as well. Those will be replaced with the new indicator. Mouse up to the upper panel, alt right click and choose add to panel. In the dialog box choose indicator applet complete. When you select that applet, click add and then click on close. Now we just need to move it, so Alt, right click on it again, select Move, and click and drag it to the right end of the upper panel bar. Now we're getting closer to a classic Ubuntu look. And you'll notice the only thing we're really missing is the Ubuntu logo. So let's go ahead and add that as well while we're here. To do this, we'll actually need to edit a configuration file. It's not a difficult edit to make, but it's one that you might just want to pay a little extra close attention to as we go through it. Uh, so let's go ahead and step through. Click on Applications and go to Accessories and launch the terminal again. We need to type in another terminal command. And that command is as follows. Type gksu space gedit space forward slash usr forward slash share forward slash themes forward slash ambience forward slash gtk dash 3.0 forward slash apps forward slash gnome dash panel dot css once you've typed that in you can see the call out in the video for that but once you've typed it in simply press the enter key this will launch a basic text editor that we can edit the configuration file with so once you press the enter key you'll be prompted for a password so go ahead and enter that once again it's the same password that you used to log into the system once you enter it click on OK and here we are. This is our simple text editor that we're going to use. You'll notice it opened a new tab that's got our configuration file in it and we are looking for one particular command. The command we are looking for in this configuration file is the panel menu bar dash icon dash visible command. The easiest way to find that line is to click on search, go to find and type in panel menu bar dot menu bar dot menu item and then press enter. That will find the line that we need. Okay, now the line that we need to enter in has to go in a specific place. So we need to go to the bottom of that block of code, follow my cursor, press the enter key 
line space down a couple. Then we'll tab over to follow the convention of this file. Just make sure everything kind of stays in line with each other. And we need to type the following line. Simply type dash panel menu bar, all one word, dash icon, dash visible, colon, space, true, semicolon. This will basically just enable the Ubuntu icon to show back up in the upper panel. Okay, let's move it around a little bit just to follow convention. And now we need to save the file. So go file, save, and we can just close it out or quit. Now we'll get a prompt because we had another empty tab open. So just simply click close. Now let's go ahead and close that saving. We'll save it again for good measure. And just close it out. Now we can simply type exit in the terminal window and close that as well. And we need to log off from Ubuntu. By logging off and logging back onto Ubuntu, we can make sure that the icon change did in fact take place. Go ahead and log back in. We'll go ahead and jump ahead so we can get back to our desktop. And there we have it. In the upper left hand corner you'll see the little Ubuntu symbol. And that if you've used versions of Ubuntu previous to 11.04 and 11.10, you'll recognize. Now we have one more thing we need to change. And the reason we need to change this is so upon rebooting into Ubuntu, you don't need to select Classic Ubuntu No Effects. You'll just be able to select Classic Ubuntu and let it ride. So yet again, we need to go back into the terminal. So click on Applications, Accessories, and go down to Terminal. And we have one more command we need to type in. Okay, the command you need to type is GKSU space gedit space forward slash user forward slash share forward slash gnome dash session forward slash sessions forward slash gnome dash classic dot session then press the enter key and you'll be asked for your password again enter that in and click on OK and there's our text editor again this time instead of adding to the configuration file we need to take a little away so find the line that says required providers at the end of it you'll notice there's a window manager semicolon notifications semicolon simply take away the notification semicolon once you have made that change simply save your file and close it now with that small change when you log into Ubuntu if you select the login options uh, you'll now be able to select classic Ubuntu and you will not have to select classic Ubuntu with no effects that's made that change. So to demonstrate that we'll just simply log out of Ubuntu and log back in. When we log in click the little gear above our password block select classic Ubuntu and enter your password. And once it boots up you will be greeted with a classic version of Ubuntu. Now this is about as classic looking as you're going to get with Ubuntu 11.10. Uh, you can see everything is nice, everything looks like it's in its place uh, where you're used to it. If you're not a big fan of Unity this is a great way to go about getting, uh, getting that classic look and feel back to Ubuntu. As always, be sure you catch up with us on our website at techiesmarts.com. Also, feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Google+. All those links will be in the video description below. And also, if you're watching this on the blog, they'll be below the video there as well. Once again, thanks for watching, and have a great day.